The former U.S. National Security Council advisor has told Al Jazeera the Bush administration looked the other way while Afghan drug lords went about their business in the early days of the post-Taliban government. The accusations follow claims by a former counter-narcotics official that President Hamid Karzai is in fact blocking efforts to tackle the country's drugs problem. Zaina Awad has more. Afghanistan is making its way back to the top of the U.S. agenda with more and more American soldiers losing their lives there by the day. But Afghanistan comes with an old, unresolved dilemma. What to do about poppy seed cultivation, a business worth billions of dollars and one that supplies the world with the overwhelming majority of its heroin. Now, in an upcoming U.S. media report, former Bush administration counter-narcotic official Thomas Schweig alleges that the Karzai government itself is implicated in the opium trade at the highest level. The U.S. administration has always known about this, and it did nothing. In an extraordinary admission to Al Jazeera, former U.S. National Security Council director for Afghanistan confirmed this on record. Certainly when I worked this issue at the White House in 2001, 2002, we were made aware, very clearly aware, that the highest government officials, including the Minister of Defense at the time, were drug traffickers. And there was a serious question about what would we, what would we do, how would we get aid into Afghanistan and deal with this Afghan government. The report also points out that instead of fighting drugs and corruption, Karzai appointed Aizatullah Wasifi, a convicted heroin dealer, to his inner circle in government as anti-corruption committee head. Karzai was quick to deny the charges, saying... Afghanistan never takes the blame for the drugs threat. Without a doubt, some Afghans are drug smugglers, but the majority of them are the international mafia who do not live in Afghanistan. But the report insists that the drug mafia is primarily local, and deeply integrated into the government. The U.S. administration decided to ignore this overarching reality. Drugs, it said at the time, was not their problem to sort. A decision, many argue, that's cost Afghanistan dearly as communities across the country battle addiction and poverty. Zaina Awad, Al Jazeera. Let's go live to Valencia in Spain and speak to Yorick Kaminga, who's from the international policy think tank, the Senlis Council. Mr. Kaminga, many thanks for your time. I guess the crux of this whole report that we've seen in the uh, New York Times newspaper is that drugs was never an issue for the United States in Afghanistan. I guess my first question is, do you agree with that? And if so, why was it never an issue? Well, first of all, uh, it's, it's the classic case, what we see now, of uh, former officials coming out with stories uh, that basically justify their own misguided policies by blaming, putting the blame on others, in this case, uh, the Pentagon and uh, the Afghan government. Um, definitely what we should do is to avoid this kind of blame game. That's not what uh, the Afghans need, what the Afghan population need. Instead, we should really indeed ask the question, um, what have we done in the past few years when it comes to counter narcotics and have our policies actually made things worse? And that's really definitely the case. So I would really uh, urge also the next uh, US administration to really focus on that question. What can we do to overhaul now counter narcotics uh, policies as they are implemented to really come to, uh, up with an approach that doesn't uh, increase poverty and that doesn't really uh, fuel the inf insurgency. But is there at least the basis of an anti-narcotics program in place or does it need to be completely stripped away and started again? Yeah, we should really start, uh, go back to the drawing board and start again. We should not forget that this is not an Afghan policy that is in place. It's a US-inspired uh, policy based on the US war on drugs. Um, which obviously is an outdated uh, U.S. policy model that hasn't worked anywhere in the world. So that's the first start. W uh, that's also why we really can't blame the, the Afghan government for this, because um, this program, the U.S. model, is run through the ministries in Afghanistan that are funded by the U.S. and other international uh, money. And uh, we're also funding the expertise, the advisors, and the people even on the ground, uh, for example, in the south, that are coordinating the policies, the eradication policies that are have been completely ineffective. But does are, the, uh, part the Afghan of, of government, the, the private military, or, sorry to interrupt you, sorry. does the Afghan government itself not have some accountability here for, uh, as I've read through the report, not taking advantage of things like the aerial spraying and things like that and not actually putting into place some good ideas that were there from the US administration? 
Well, of course, there is joint uh, responsibility. And in fact, it should be first and foremost uh, the, the ownership of the Afghan government on this issue. However, as, as you call it, the option of uh, aerial spraying, that uh, is, is one of the few good steps that actually the, the Afghan government hasn't done, because that would, of course, spell utter disaster for our uh, current uh, policies of winning the hearts and minds of the people. And that would further boost the, the, the current insurgency. On the other hand, of course, we should indeed look into different options that we have. And, and our one option is obviously the, the Poppy for Medicine model that our organization, the Sandless Council, has been advocating for. We should need more political will to indeed investigate whether uh, innovative policies are possible and whether we can indeed use uh, the, the illegal or part of the illegal opium for uh, uh, the production of Afghan uh, made uh, morphine, for example. Well, that's the thing. The, so the, that's your, idea, course, the, your idea of, of, of poppies for medicine is a very good one and a very worthy one. However, the big issue with the poppies is that there's so much money involved in the opium production, I guess. How do you actually physically move people across to this idea of, as you say, poppies for morphine and really get them on board with it? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, part uh, of the solution there lies into the, the local production of these medicine. These medicines are relatively easy to produce. And if you produce them in the local communities, uh, taking advantage of the social control systems there, you can actually keep a lot of the added economic value in those areas, thus providing an, uh, an, an income that is relatively competitive. And that's another point that has been raised by the reports that came out uh, today, is that uh, they pretend that the farmers um, cultivate these poppies out of greed. Because, of course, we know that that's not true, and it's clearly linked with poverty. And if you go into the rural uh, communities, uh, which the Senators Council does on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you will not see any uh, expensive vehicles, any uh, rich villas and rich people there. Mm. It's a poverty issue, and that's the main reason why we should overhaul current policies, because we are making matters worse at the moment. Yorick Kaminga, live in Valencia. Great to get your thoughts. Many thanks for joining us.